subscribe to our channel if you want to keep up to date with all our travel news, tips, and reviews, as well as helping support the channel. Welcome to Chefchiran, Morocco, one of the most beautiful cities in Morocco, located in the northwest of Morocco, among the Rift Mountains, and affectionately referred to as the Blue City. And here we'll give you a little background and history on Chef Sharan. In addition to being called Sharan and the Blue City, it's also referred to as the Blue Pearl of Morocco. Why blue? Good question. Now, I'm not exactly sure why, but these are a few of the theories that people have come up with over the years. If you have your own idea, or think it's one of these, please let us know in the comments below. When to go. Obviously, the best time to go is when it fits into your schedule, but if you have a choice, you probably want to go when you have comfortable weather and the crowds aren't too bad, we went towards the end of May, and we had beautiful weather, slightly overcast, and there were no crowds. How to get there. Most people travel to Chef Chiran from Tangier, as it's the closest main city, as well as from Fez, and people also travel from Meknes, the capital Rabat, and Casablanca as well. We came from Tangier because it's the closest, and it has bullet train access. Now, these are your options on how to get there. And remember, as of yet, there are no train options. Since we booked the private tour, and it really wasn't that expensive, we had a car take us to Chef Chiran and back to Tangier. And these are the approximate drive times by car. And the bus will take you a little longer. How you get there basically depends on your budget, your time, and your comfort level. And whichever you choose, you'll get some great views along the way. How many days do I need in Chef Sharan? Now, if you're coming from Tangier, I'd say you could do it in one day. You could always spend two if you want. But from any other city, I would probably do two days because of the long ride. And they have some beautiful Riyadhs, some great hotels, and even hostels if you're on a budget. Tour or not to tour? That is the question. Now, we're not really big on tours, but we decided to try one here, and it was a great decision. Our local tour guide was awesome, and we did walk around the Medina a little bit by ourselves as well, and you will get lost, but don't worry, that's all part of the experience. And here's our driver, Moseth, who took us from Tangier to Chef Saran and back, really nice guy. And for an extra, I think, 300 dirhan, or 30 US dollars, he gave us a tour of some awesome sites in Tangier when we returned, and I'll add a link to our Tangier video below. And here's a little background on Medinas, which are located in most major cities in Morocco, as well as in a few other countries. And we were extremely fortunate to have an incredible local guide, Norman. Hello everyone, my name is Norman, and welcome to Shipshawan. We're gonna enjoy the blue city. Chef Chiran is a city centered around tourism. The majority of the income made in Chef Chiran is from tourism, but that in no way takes away from its intrinsic beauty, the friendly and inviting people, the wonderful scenery, and yes, a whole lot of blue. In this case, I'm a Jewish kid. This gift is a big and the Jewish gate is small. This gate has no doors. And the Jewish gate, there is a door. Okay? So the cars are not allowed to go inside the Medina. Except the tuk-tuk. The one that we saw earlier. The tuk-tuk take the delivery, the heavy things to the shops. We can't take the lunch from there. And here where the markets used to have to be. Okay? It's called it Dabi the gate of the market. But now the market is a little bit out. Let me show you. We are now, now we are outside of the media. So the market, that's where. Each one of these gates seems to have a story to tell, rich history, and yes, 
a lot of beauty. And here we have what we were told is the oldest door in Shesharan. Now all the houses here have to be painted blue, but that's not the case for the doors, although some of them are, and many of them are quite unique and beautifully designed. Like I had mentioned earlier, we came towards the end of May, and we came on a Monday, and it worked out perfectly. And as Norman told us, it was the best time to come. Well, even if you want to take a picture, you have to wait for like forever. That's like May, like April and May. For the for the tourists who don't want the crowded, yeah, we have to come this period. And here you get a beautiful house with a beautiful design of the door. But if you come in the summer, hundreds of people going up down here. And of course, we had to stop by some of the most beautiful and popular spots for some photos. And our first stop for some photos was the famous Chef Shiran All Blue Stairwell. And yes, we even got a glimpse of the mystery woman behind the blue door. And we hid her face to protect her identity. And here we look at one of the most photographed spots in Chef Shiran. Now, since the city has become so popular, at some of the more famous spots, they've been charging about five US dollars to take a photo. I appreciate the entrepreneurship, but we skip those spots. And it doesn't really matter because it seems like at every turn in this beautiful city, there's a wonderful place for a photo shoot. And here is the map they provide around the city. And you wonder why people get lost. I don't understand it. This map is crystal clear. So you will get lost in the Medina, but that's all part of the experience. But they do have these great signs on the side of many of the buildings. These signs will usually provide you with a name, a short description of what you're looking at, and a little history as well. Now let's head back to a little bit of our tour in the Medina. This is, we call it, Genevia, without the hood. This is very like Moroccan with Moroccan design. This is the thin one, and there is the thick one, we call Jalaba with the hood. It's made by the sheep wool. It's really good at keep our body warm. We use it only in the winter. Because in the winter here, it's very, very cold. It gets like minus 4 Celsius, which will be like 15 F, finer height. And you huh? see the woman with the hat? She's the Berber woman. She's wearing traditional hat, the clothes and the traditional hat. The hat we call it Shashia. There is two types of Shashia. There is the one with the colors and the one with one color, dark blue. Which means they are coming from different regions. For example, the women with the, with the, the color, they have in their village the best olives and the best the best olive tree. So they have the best olive and the best olive oil. And the one in front of us sitting there, they are coming from another another village, and she they have the best spinach, garlic, and vegetables. The one with the dark blue. If you see her behind, me. yeah. So that's one. Like, if you see her, like. The stuff. This is the mint that we use with the tea, and this is some herb that we use with the mint tea to keep our body warm. This one we use especially in the winter to keep our body warm, and this is a dry pig. Here you can see we have like small doors, and here there is no windows because inside we have also open area, and there is the rooms in the corners. So when it's raining, it's raining inside, and that's what a lot of people say, it's gonna help. And inside, like, there is rooms in the corner. When it, it rains, it's in, in the middle. We call it like a Riyadh. Have you been like to in Riyadh, the fancy <laughs> hotel? It's your good. And this is like, now we are in one of the oldest area in Shifshawi. It's, all the houses here are very old, more than 400 years, and all of them are, it's good. Hope you see. 
So this is how our houses are built with the rocks and the clay. And we have a tiny door here. Of course, cats, you have many cats here. Tiny doors because our grandmother, they were very small. Even for my grandmother, she, she was like this, <laughs> this size. And we have the, 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 small, the small doors to keep the heat out. Like I said, in the, during the summer, it's here very hot, like 64 Celsius, 46 Celsius, sorry, like 118 F. So, but inside, it's very cooler. And in the winter, like very cold outside, and inside, warmer. We don't have, we don't have AC. The rocks are natural AC. And during the winter, the, the whole reef mountains that you see in front of us, it's covered by snow. It's snow everywhere here. The last time that was snowing here in Shipshawa, it was in 1997. Now let's look at some of the shops. No, those cats aren't for sale. I believe they're just resting. And as you pass through the shops in the Medina, you can see the incredible craftsmanship. From the colorful ceramics, to the jewelry, to the clothes. And of course, we can't forget those wonderful handmade rugs. And there was a spice for every taste. And there seemed to be beautiful colors everywhere you turned in this unique city. And with all the great food in Chef Sharan, including the figs, the nuts, the fruit, the desserts, you'll easily find something unique to your liking. Now let's take a closer look at one of the classic rug-making shops. The Hajj, the man, the 83 years old man, he went to Pride. And he will be back anytime. Here he's doing the, the weaving, he's using his piece there. The piece is the green one and the yellow one. And then he starts doing it like, like this. With the, the, he's doing now the Shifshan color blankets, blue and the white, with some symbols there. And this machine has like more than 200 years. Yes. And this is the, this the blanket is the man work and this is the women work. The women work is harder than the man work. Yes, the women work this been like months doing that. No, this is one of the oldest oven we have here in Shipshaw. It belonged to this gentleman. It was belonged to his dad. And after, before his dad passed away, it belonged to him. And now his son is there. Let's take a little closer look. You can see how many people inside. You will, you will ask me how you remember so the stamina bridge and the stamina bridge. Do you see the server stick that you need to head? In hand, he remember, he marks the bread. For example, you bring him to bread, he will make one hole in each bread, okay? And if another time you bring him like bread, he mark it like two holes in each bread. This is how he remember. So when he finish, he see the holes, like one hole for you. So holes for me, three holes for the other time you leave. I don't know why I found it so fascinating that he has to change paddles when he's taking out the tagines from when he's taking out the bread. It makes sense. Still, I found the whole process of making the bread and the tagines very interesting. Not to mention making me extremely hungry. The tagine. And we seem to have tagines almost every other meal while in Morocco. And of course, we bought a tagine in Morocco so we can cook these meals at home. Here's a few of ours. And yes, they were delicious. This is a chicken tagine with the potatoes. We really did like trying a few different tagine dishes. And if you watch our Tangier video, you'll see some of the dishes we tried. That's the chicken with the fries. It's so good. After he took the, the paper off, and then the, the fries in the top was so crunchy and so good. The bread was so fresh and tasty. But now it's time for a little dessert. We have the <laughs> coconut, mm -hmm. and we have here and there peanuts and honey, and we have the date one, and also we have the the, the, the corn flour. It's so good. We call maizena, and this is the peanut as well. So all of them are my favorites. You can pick up anyone you want and as much as you want. So for me, my recommendation, I love this one, the gazelle horn, and also the the honey, the peanuts and the honey. It's also good, and also the date. And coconuts as well. <laughs> so everything. These desserts were really good and not too sweet. So after these pastries, we thought it was time for something fresh to drink. 
Even something so simple as getting a glass of orange juice in Chef Sharan was quite an experience. The orange juice stand was beautifully decorated and the people working there were extremely nice. And of course, even getting orange juice in Chef Sharan makes for a perfect photo op. Or two. And here we enter one of the squares in the Medina and they have these beautifully decorated fountains as some residents of Chef Sharan do not have running water, they need to come to the fountain for their water needs. And since these fountains are exquisitely decorated, it's a great spot for another beautiful photo. Now let's take a look at the main square, which is pretty busy most of the time. And generally shops and restaurants in main squares are a little more pricey, so keep that in mind. And they have this tree in the center of the square that they decorate for Christmas, so I'm guessing it probably looks pretty incredible here during the holidays. Now let's take a look at one of the most famous mosques in Chef Sharan. We call it the Masjid of the Mosque. You have four doors. The one in front is for the men, and that one is upward is for women. And there is one, one door for the funeral, and one door to go to Wudu before you go to pray. This is the first mosque called for prayer, and the other is following. And apparently, Chef Sharan is becoming so popular now, they're shooting commercials here. Here they did like a Prada perfume commercial here in this area a few months ago. As you can see here, how many layers? Even here, like, they painted like a hundred times, like one or two. Community of, and we crossed the Medina from Babusu. On the way, now we are in Rasilma, in Puerta del Onsar, Babur Onsar. And now we are going to see where the water are coming from, under the mountains, and where the women wash the clothes. And then I'm going to take you there to see the view of the Medina. Sounds good? Sounds good. All right. Now we are still inside the Medina. I'm outside. You are inside now, all of us are outside. Does it get any better than fresh water coming off a mountainside? So here, where the water coming from? Here, it's the mineral water. It's coming from the mountain. And during Ramadan, when we are fasting, you find a line of people here having an empty bottle before the sunset, and they fill water from there. The water is good for the kidney stone. Also, it's good for the body. It's fresh. Of course, we had to try some of the water, as well as take some to go. It was really refreshing. And if you've ever complained about doing your laundry, imagine this was your laundry routine. Here were our women wash the clothes. I told you earlier, our women are very small. Like we can't reach the water. So that's why we close the hole with the plastic bag or with the rock, like this one. And the water gets higher. And then it will be easier for them to wash and this scrub. Yeah, you can. Well, it's good now a quick look of the Medina from the outside. Escape from the south of Spain, from the Andalus. They came here and they found the place safe and there is the wa here is water. That's why it's here yeah, and they start build their building. You know, and they protect themselves. Chef Chiron is a unique, beautiful city. The kind of city you could really fall for. If you're traveling to Morocco, especially northern Morocco, Chef Chiron is absolutely worth the visit. People might think it's just a tourist destination where people take photos, but it's so much more. It should definitely be included in your itinerary. I hope this video helps you. The next time you travel to Morocco, safe travels. Remember to like, share, and subscribe if you want to keep up with all our latest travel news, tips, and reviews.